thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Job, Job chapter 15, where we have Eliphaz, Job, Job's friend, talking to him. And again, there's some truth and some lies in his friends and their counsel to Job. But one thing that he did say under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Job chapter 15, verse 16, that is true, is that unrepentant, sinful people will drink sin or iniquity like water. When I read this scripture verse, I was reminded that one of the evidences of a Christian in life is that they will be broken over sin. There'll be a conviction over sin. That's why we need to examine ourselves. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 tells us to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 tells us that we are to examine ourselves before we take the Lord's Supper to see if there's any unrepentant sin in our lives. So it's good to do an assessment of our hearts and our minds before God, get into prayer. D.L. Moody was a Christian evangelist, theologian. He was born in 1837. He died in 1899. He once said that those who stand the tallest in life are those who kneel the most. Get on your knees, my friends. Pray to the Lord. Maybe not just physically get on your knees, but spiritually. Get in a place of prayer with God and examine yourself, how you look at sin. We are told in the Bible in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said that the just and the unjust enjoy the sun and the rain. It falls down on the righteous and the unrighteous. We call that common grace blessings. God gives us common grace blessings in life. For instance, wine. Now, if you're an alcoholic and you're getting drunk, you're in sin. But a little wine, we're told in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, is good for the stomach. It's how you look at it. Moderation. Same thing with sex. Sex is a beautiful thing that God gave us to procreate between a man and a woman in marriage. Anything outside of that is called fornication or adultery. It's sin. Same thing with materialistic blessings. There's nothing wrong with going to the store and getting food to bring to your house or buying clothes to put on your back and put on shoes and sneakers on your feet. There's nothing wrong with these things. They're common grace blessings from God. But it's when it becomes an idol to us, when we put these things before God, that becomes sin. You see, my friends, there is this struggle, internal struggle that we all have between the flesh and the spirit. The Bible is very clear. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 tells us that the spirit and the flesh war against each other. Read Romans chapter 7, especially verses 7 to 25. It talks about there how Paul, who was chosen by God to write two-thirds of the books of the New Testament, spoke about in his own personal life. This is a really godly man. And he's talking about how he had this internal struggle within him about this topic and this issue of sin in his life. We all struggle with sin, my friends, and it's one of the evidences that God, through the Holy Spirit, you see, when Jesus Christ walked this earth, he said that he was going to leave one day, but he was going to give us the counselor, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And one of the works of the Holy Spirit in our lives, one of the evidences that we know that the Holy Spirit is in us, as, as John chapter 16, verse 8 tells us, is that the Holy Spirit would convict us of sin. Do you have a conviction in your heart when you do something wrong? When you're thinking something wrong, when you say something wrong with your tongue, is there a conviction? That is a good thing. When I was younger, I got saved at a young age, at the age of 19 in 1985. And I remember rejoicing in the Lord for a couple of years, but then rebelling, becoming a prodigal son. But as we read the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32, the key, one of the key verses I find in that parable is verse 17, where it says that the son came to his senses. You see, he was living in the pigsty. He had squandered his life. He took his father's money and he was li literally living in a pigsty. But he came to his senses and he came back to his father. He got convicted of what he was doing wrong. He said, I have sinned against you, father. That is the evidence of a true child of God. One who is broken over their sin, knowing that they've sinned against a holy God. King David, who sinned mightily in his life, penned Psalm 51, 
under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he said in verse 17, a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15, says basically the same thing, that God is close to those who are of a broken and contrite heart. Isaiah would go on to say in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2, that God is close to those who tremble at his word. John Flavel was an old Puritan. He was born in 1627. He died in 1691. And he would have a saying about how we are all struggling with temptation in life as Christians, but we will not be happy or content in that temptation. There will be that internal struggle. When I got saved, as I was saying before, I rejoiced in the Lord. I became a prodigal. I went out into the world, into the pigsty. I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing that the natural man would think is great. Wow, this feels good doing this and doing that. But I wasn't happy in doing what I was doing. Friends were saying to me, oh, what are you turning gay? You don't like girls no more? Now I know, and I knew then, but I know now more as I'm getting older. That was the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That was Christ in me saying, son, my child, this is wrong. Get out of this. God will not make you happy in the pigsty. You might enjoy your sin for a little while, but you won't be able to rejoice in it for too long. You will truly, truly get convicted more and more. Do we all sin? Absolutely. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 to 10 tells us, if we say we are without sin, we make God out to be a liar. We all sin, my friends. But in our Christian walk, in our sins, we will slip on board the boat, but we will never slip overboard. We might stumble into sin, but we will never fall and stay down. We will get up. And I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will encourage us all in our Christian lives to remember that one of the key evidences of a child of God is repentance. <coughs> Excuse me. There's always going to be a repentant heart. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning back to God. John the Baptist started his public ministry with repentance in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself started his public ministry with repentance. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Repentance is so important that our Lord and Savior told us in Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 5, without repentance, no one will see the kingdom of God. There has to be that breaking of the heart, the turning back from sin to God in our lives. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today, Lord. Convict us, break us, Lord God, mold us. We are only the potter, you are the clay, as Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 6 tells us. Use us, use us for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all today, my friends.